This video will give you the keys to successfully set up and connect a community with the CAP XLV Access Control System and MyQ Business. We'll break the process down into three parts. Surveying the site and setting up the community facility database. Pre-configuring the CAP XLV. Then installing the CAP XLV at the job site. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. The procedures demonstrated should only be performed by trained professional installers and service technicians. Safe operation and servicing requires that you follow all instructions and safety advisories found in the manual. To locate a trained professional installer or service technician, go to liftmaster.com slash locate a dealer. Let's dive in. Your mission starts with gathering the information you'll need to create the database. Go to the Partner Portal at partner.liftmaster.com. Download and print the Installation Readiness Survey. This tool will become your best friend as you gather information and confirm the site is properly set up to receive the CAP XLV. Then head over to the job site and walk through the site survey form item by item. Here are some of the things you'll need to check out. Talk to the IT team about their network setup and the bandwidth requirements for video. For best performance, the superior quality video of the CAP XLV requires a robust internet connection with ample bandwidth. For each installed CAP XLV, LiftMaster recommends a minimum upload speed of 5 megabits per second. This means an installation with two CAP XLV controllers should plan to provide a minimum upload speed of 10 megabits per second. Additional bandwidth may be needed considering usage of other devices on the network like cameras and computers. There are other network considerations and we'll cover those later in the video. Wi-Fi and high-speed wired internet are both acceptable methods for connecting the CAP XLV to the internet. Upgrading a phone line to DSL is an acceptable type of high-speed wired internet. Cellular service is not recommended for video applications. For installations using static IP, note the following details. IP address, net mask, gateway, primary DNS, secondary DNS, and tertiary DNS. For Wi-Fi installations, make note of the network name and password. Network proximity is another consideration. For Ethernet connections, the CAP XLV location must be within 300 feet of the network switch or router. For Wi-Fi connections, the signal strength must be sufficiently strong. Wi-Fi extenders should be avoided because they introduce latency and can negatively affect video quality. As you walk through the job site, make sure the physical location meets UL325 and ASTM F2200 requirements where these standards apply. Make sure AC power is available and meets these requirements. There needs to be a dedicated 120 volt AC outlet rated for 10 amps. For outdoor installations, the dedicated outlet must be inside a weatherproof NEMA 4 electrical enclosure. Appropriate grounding must be available. Check for a ground rod or acceptable alternative. This is your opportunity to identify the gate operators, doors, and other devices that the CAP XLV will be controlling. If any Wiegand credential readers or remote control devices are to be used with the CAP XLV, make sure they are compatible. Visiting the site also allows you to identify tools and other items you may need on the day of installation. Lastly, you'll need to work with the community manager to get the contact information for all the people who will be added to the database, including residents, workers, managers, and the like. After concluding the site survey and prior to arrival for installation, work with the community manager to make sure all required wiring is routed. The next part of your mission is to get logged in so you can set up the community database. Open a browser and head to myqbusiness.com. You'll need to do a few things. They include adding the community as a facility, which includes setting up the subscription, adding the community manager as the facility manager or owner, adding all the residents and other people who will have access to the facility, adding credentials such as card readers and remote controls and assigning them to the people, and finally, updating your contact information in the facility. 
This will allow you to test that everything is set up properly after you install the CAP XLV. Let's get familiar with some of the most important screens. Click the plus sign to add a facility. When creating a new facility, several payment options are available. You may use your LiftMaster account number or choose payment via ACH or credit card. If you want to set up a LiftMaster account, click the Create New Account Number button to begin the credit application process. It may take a few days to receive your account number. On the pop-up window, click Create Facility. Select Community. Click Next. Fill in all the required information wherever you see a red asterisk. Enter the details for the facility manager. Click Next. Select the payment method. For this demonstration, we'll choose Credit Card. Fill in the payment details and billing address. Click Next. When the payment method is accepted, the facility will be set up. Next, add the credentials. Click to expand the menu sidebar. Click Credentials. Click Add Credential. Select the credential type. A credential is a barcode, card, long-range RFID tag or transmitter that is used to gain access to the community. Select the format being used by the community. To add multiple credentials at one time, select Bulk Load. Then enter the first and last credential numbers. You can also enter a single credential if you leave Bulk Load unchecked. Enter the facility code. Click Save. Now let's add people, starting with the Community Manager. Click to expand the menu sidebar. Click People. Click Add Person. Fill in the required fields. Choose the role of Facility Manager or Facility Owner. A facility owner has the control to edit all database information related to the facility, including billing. A facility manager can edit almost everything except for the facility itself, the permissions for roles, and they can't view billing information. Enter the email address. Select Send MyQ Business Invite. The community manager will get an email with instructions on what they need to do next. Fill in the address the information that should appear in the directory for the individual, and assign credentials. Be sure to add the individual to an access group. There are three default groups, resident, staff, and vendor. Click Save. Add the rest of the people to the database. There are three roles. Dealer techs, who help set up the community facility or who may need to provide support. Residents, people who live in the community and who will be using guest management and the MyQ community app. And access managers, security personnel or community administrators who need to update user information in the database. Other users who don't require MyQ business access, such as landscapers or maintenance people and vendors, do not need to have a role assigned. Lastly, update your own profile in the facility. You'll need to add your phone number and credentials so you can test the function of the card reader, remote controls, and PIN code. You'll complete the rest of the database setup when you open the CAP XLV. We recommend pre-configuring the CAP XLV at your workshop prior to installing it at the job site. This allows you to confirm ability to connect to the internet, connection to the facility database, and basic functionality of placing a call, swiping a card, entering a code, and using a remote control. Here's what you'll need at your workshop in order to pre-configure the CAP XLV. An ethernet or Wi-Fi network connection, a computer with internet access, a MyQ business account with your dealer owner or dealer technician login credentials. Let's talk about what comes in the box. The system includes the CAP XLV access control panel, a power supply, Wi-Fi and radio antennas with cables, keys, assorted hardware, electronic components, 
and the manual. Unpack the CAP XLV and set it up on a protected surface such as the packing material. Unlock the CAP XLV and open it. Locate the power supply and observe the stripped and tinned red and black wires. Inside the CAP XLV, locate the power internet board. Locate the power input connector. Notice the markings showing plus and minus and observe the orientation of the terminal block. You need to make sure you connect wires for the correct polarity. Remove the terminal block. Loosen the screws in the terminal block. Insert the red wire into the terminal block hole that aligns with the plus terminal on the board. Insert the black wire into the other hole. Tighten the screws to secure the wires. Reattach the terminal block to the power input connector, making sure the red wire aligns to the plus terminal and the black wire aligns to the minus terminal. To mount Wiegand credential readers, refer to the manual for the CAP XLV or the instructions for the reader. To wire the reader, locate the door control board labeled with Door 1. Locate the Wiegand input for Door 1. Observe the markings for data, power, and ground. Wires from the reader align to the terminals as follows. Green wire to data 0. White wire to data 1 red wire to power, and black wire to ground. This is the minimum wiring configuration. Follow the wiring directions for your particular reader. Remove the terminal block from door one. Loosen the screws and insert the wires in the proper holes. Then tighten the screws and reattach the terminal block. Insulate any unused wires. If there are any other devices you wish to test, Connect them now according to the instructions in the manual. Locate dip switch number one on the power internet board. To ensure the CAP XLV boots in admin mode, flip dip switch number one to the on position. Plug the power supply into a 120 volt AC outlet. The green LEDs on the door board will blink and the green LED on the power internet board will light solid when powered up. The CAP XLV will display the LiftMaster logo and other code while booting up. When the boot up is complete, you'll see a welcome message. For this demonstration, we'll be connecting to a wired network. Locate the LAN port on the power internet board. Locate the LEDs on the ethernet port on the control board. Connect the ethernet cable from a hub, switch, or router to the LAN port on the power internet board. When a connection to an active network device is established, the green LEDs on the ethernet port will light up or flicker. If the green LED is not lit, first check that the router is powered up. Also check the connections on the CAP XLV and the router. Make a note of the CP number on the welcome screen. This also appears on a label inside the CAP XLV. Tap Continue to be taken to the Network Setup screen. On the display, select Wired Network. Then tap Next. The screen will update to show network connection status information. Tap Next to exit. It's time to add the controller to the database. When you log into MyQ Business, you'll see your dashboard. If you have access to more than one facility, Click the Facilities tab and select the facility from the list, or use the drop-down menu to select the facility you want to update. Click Device Management. Click Add Devices. Click the plus sign. On the pop-up window, click Go to Billing. Here, you will choose a smart community subscription that will be billed either monthly or yearly. Plans are based on the type of controller and the number of access points. Click a radio button to select a plan. There are several add-ons. If the community wants to empower residents to manage guest access to the community, 
add guest management to the subscription. Video events are stored for one day as part of the regular subscriptions. To store video events for 30 days, choose the 30-day video storage plan. Select Community by MyQ Resident License to enable residents to use the mobile app. Licenses are available in groups of 10. Click the drop-down to select the number of licenses needed. Click Proceed to Checkout. Edit the payment details or the billing address as needed. Then click Activate Subscription. If you choose the Resident Video License add-on and you aren't already using Phone.com as your SIP provider, you will be prompted to set up Phone.com for service. On the Facility Audio and Video Call Setup screen, choose I already have a Phone.com account if you already have an account. Click Next and you will be prompted to log in to your Phone.com account. Or select I need to register a new Phone.com account to set up a new account. Click Next. Enter your information. Agree to the terms and click Next. Your new phone number will be displayed. Click Next. Review your order and click Next. Enter your billing information. Then click Pay Now. You'll return to the People screen with a message prompting you to add a CAP XLV to enable resident video calling. Click Add Now. On the Add Device screen, click the plus sign next to the controller. Enter the CP number that was displayed on the CAP XLV. Enter a name for the controller. Click Save. The device is now listed in the facility's Device Management tab. Select the device or entrance. You need to associate the Phone.com account with one or more doors. Click Call Settings. Click to allow access for the desired doors. Click Save. To view the live stream from the camera, click Video Settings. Click to view live video. This is also where you can enable recording of events. To confirm the camera is functioning correctly, tap Audio Video. The live stream from the camera will be displayed in the Camera Settings window. Exit Admin Mode by flipping DIP switch number 1 to the OFF position. Log in to MyQ Business. By now, you've already set up the community database by adding residents, credentials, and more. When you add the CAP XLV to the facility, the database will be downloaded. This can take up to five minutes depending on the speed of the internet connection. Download is complete when the No Phone Service button changes to display Phone Call. Confirm the clock, welcome message, and background image are displaying the correct information. Tap the Phone Call, then Find a Name buttons, and search for your own name. Call yourself. Answer your phone. Confirm the microphone and speaker audio are working. Press 9 to grant access. Confirm the appropriate door is activated. The relay light on the doorboard will turn on and you will hear a click. Also test credentials. Touch a card to the card reader. The relay light on the doorboard will turn on and you will hear a click. Test the entry code. Tap entry code PIN. Enter the code on the numeric keypad. Tap the green Enter button. The relay light on the doorboard will turn on and you will hear a click. Now that you've successfully pre-configured the CAP XLV, it's time to repack it for transportation to the job site. Disconnect power to the CAP XLV. Disconnect the wires from the Wiegand and power input connector and the Ethernet cable. To ensure the CAP XLV boots in admin mode the next time you power it on at the job site, flip dip switch number one to the on position. Close. As you learned during the site survey and preparation, 
The CAP XLV installation requires a variety of wires, including power, relay connections, grounding, internet, and accessory cables. When you arrive at the job site, make sure these wires are available and ready for connection. Open the door and lay the CAP XLV face down on a flat surface with the door hanging off the edge. Use the packing material, such as the box, it was shipped in. Identify which knockouts need to be removed based on your application. For this installation, we'll punch four knockouts for mounting and the center knockout for wiring. Use a small center punch tool and mallet to carefully tap the knockouts. Use pliers to remove the metal knockout tabs. The CAP XLV needs to be securely mounted to a flat surface or pedestal. Use the CAP XLTK trim kit and back box when mounting in a recessed application. Position the unit for mounting, pulling the wiring through the mounting gaskets and then through the knockouts. Secure the CAP XLV to the surface using the appropriate hardware for your application. Stainless steel hardware is recommended. Use of zinc plated or galvanized hardware is not recommended because of the risk for rusting. Antennas are required for Wi-Fi network connection and Security Plus 2.0 radio remotes and wireless connection to LiftMaster gate operators. If both antennas will be used, these must be a minimum of 8 inches apart. Install the antennas on opposite sides of the CAP XLV. For the radio antenna, remove one of the 3 8 inch knockouts on the side or back of the CAP XLV. Secure the radio antenna cable to the desired knockout on the CAP XLV with the provided washer and nut. Attach the radio antenna to the connector on the secured end of the cable. Then, attach the other end of the cable to the power internet board. For the Wi-Fi antenna, remove one of the quarter-inch knockouts on the side or back of the CAP XLV. Secure the Wi-Fi antenna cable to the desired knockout on the CAP XLV with the provided washer and nut. Attach the Wi-Fi antenna to the connector on the secured end of the cable. Then, attach the other end of the cable to the control board. If the antennas need to be mounted remotely, 15-foot extension cables are available from LiftMaster. An earth ground rod is strongly recommended and should be no further than 12 feet from the CAP XLV and use a minimum of 12-gauge wire in most cases. Proper grounding protects the CAP XLV from damaging electrical transients. Be sure to check and follow all national and local codes for proper grounding procedures. During your site survey, you confirmed availability of a dedicated 120 volt AC outlet rated for 10 amps. Identify the power wiring leading from the CAP XLV mounting location. Connect to the stripped DC output wires on the power supply. Connect the black wire on the power supply to the negative wire from the CAP XLV and the red wire on the power supply to the positive wire from the CAP XLV. Consult the manual for allowable wire run distances and recommended wire gauge. Remove the power input terminal block from the power internet board. Connect the power wires to the terminal block with the positive connecting to the plus terminal and the negative connecting to the minus terminal. Reattach the terminal block to the power internet board. Plug the power supply into the dedicated outlet after all connections have been made. The CAP XLV will boot into admin mode. Let's get the network connection set up. Tap Network. Tap Change Network Settings. 
you'll be prompted to select the network type. There are three options, Wi-Fi network, wired network, which configures automatically, manual setup of a wired connection. For wired Ethernet connections, loop the Ethernet cable where the cable enters the CAP XLV. Then snap the ferrite core onto the looped cable. If you're connecting to a wired network for automatic configuration, or DHCP, first plug in the Ethernet cable. Then choose Wired Network and tap Next. Connecting to the network may take a few moments. The network status will show Connected. Tap Next. If you want to manually connect to a wired network, first plug in the Ethernet cable. Choose Manual Setup, then tap Next. Fill in the fields for IP address, net mask, gateway, primary DNS, secondary DNS, tertiary DNS. Tap Next. Connecting to the network may take a few moments. The network status will show connected. Tap Next. If you're connecting using the Ethernet cable and the green LED is not lit, make sure the cable is firmly plugged in on both ends of the connection. Make sure that the router or switch is powered up. If the connection still isn't working, troubleshoot this with the assistance of the IT staff for the installation. Next, let's check the camera. On the display, press the audio video button. You will be able to see the live feed from the camera. With the CAP XLV closed, verify the camera angle and image are optimal for your installation. To adjust the camera position, open the CAP XLV and loosen the two mounting screws. Adjust the position and tighten the screws. Then close the CAP XLV. Next, disconnect all electrical power to the CAP XLV and any powered accessories such as gate operators and door locks. One CAP XLV can control up to four doors. Follow the directions for wiring each door as demonstrated earlier in the video. Connect the gate operator or door lock wires to the primary relay. Most applications use the normally open and common. Remove the terminal block from the primary relay of the desired door. Insert the wires from the gate operator and secure with a small screwdriver. Plug the terminal block back onto the control board. Connect the other end of the cable to the gate operator control board according to the instructions for your application. If using Request to Exit, connect the Request to Exit switch to the Door 1 REX connector. This feature must also be activated in MyQ Business. To monitor the position of the gate or a door using a door status sensor, wire to the status connector. To supervise the monitored connection, you'll need to supply two 1000 ohm resistors. One will be wired in series and the other in parallel on the side of the gate operator or door. This feature must also be activated in MyQ Business. Some installations will provide a postal lock to be installed in the CAP XLV. Remove the wing nut and plug and discard them. Remove the four mounting nuts from the studs. Secure the postal lock using the four nuts. Cut the factory installed wire tie from the postal lock switch. The postal lock switch is wired from the factory. Restore power to the CAP XLV and gate operator. If you choose to, Instead of wiring the CAP XLV to a gate operator, a wireless connection can be established. One CAP XLV can control up to eight LiftMaster gate operators wirelessly. If using a primary, secondary operator configuration, you can only program the primary operator to the CAP XLV. You should still be in admin mode. On the CAP XLV display, select the Outputs tab, then select the desired door number. Press and release the Learn button on the primary operator. The green transmitter LED will light. 
Press and release the Learn button again on the primary operator. The yellow network LED will light. The operator will time out of programming mode after 180 seconds. Return to the CAP XLV and tap the Learn button on the display that corresponds to the primary or auxiliary relay. The Learn button text will change to Unlearn. The gate operator will beep and exit Learn mode if successful. Confirm everything is working by tapping Test Relay on the CAP XLV display. The gate operator will open. To exit admin mode, Flip dip switch number one to the off position on the CAP XLV power internet board. It's time to test the setup. Tap phone call and select your name. Answer the phone and confirm two-way audio. Also test credentials and entry codes. Once you've confirmed everything is working, don't forget to delete your test information from the facility. The installation is complete. Be sure to set aside time to help the community manager to get up and running. For more detailed information, including wiring diagrams, please refer to the CAP XLV installation manual or visit partner.liftmaster.com.